Participants of this agri build, uh, agri warehousing management program. In fact, it was our dream program because we know that uh, unless we have a good uh, resource of uh, qualified and uh, professionally, you know, equipped uh, experts in the field of warehousing, the warehousing sector in the country may not develop as such. And uh, from my organizational point of view, it is one of our prime responsibilities: is uh, the warehousing development and regulatory authority. So development comes first and then comes the regulation. So we also believe in the fact that unless we let people know how uh, a professional uh, process of warehousing can be put on ground and uh, then only our uh, regulation will also be quite effective. And uh, with our uh, these uh, uh, students of this um, agri warehousing management program, I know many of you may uh, be already employed uh, with some organization and this course will help you in you know honing up your skills in the field of agri warehousing and uh, you will be able to excel in your own job some of you may be, may be looking for uh, uh, employment also and you may get an employment in some industry uh, some uh, remuneration but a lot of you may be thinking of uh, starting your own warehousing business and let me tell you that uh, as compared to the past, now the warehousing is assuming much much more importance in our uh, today's uh, commodity management scenario, and it really offers you a lot of self employment opportunity. And if you go really in a planned way and uh, with a lot of uh, four vision, I think you can run uh, the warehousing in a, in a profitable manner. Because uh, I know a lot many entrepreneurs in the field. Who are uh, carrying out warehousing and they are very successful and uh, their uh, scale of economies have improved drastically. My presentation to you is structured in a way that um, uh, we'll also uh, try and uh, warehouse should also know regulatory aspects of warehousing. So uh, I will discuss with you a brief about the regulatory aspects of warehousing and then. The uh, greatest uh, reform in the field of uh, warehousing has been the digitalization of uh, the warehouse receipt. That is the uh, establishment of a whole system uh, of electronic negotiable warehouse receipt, which is uh, gradually revolutionizing the whole uh, warehousing sector. And uh, in future, this is uh, going to be uh, uh, the main uh, resource for uh, various uh, business uh, processes which are going to you know initiate from the warehouses we all know uh, you must have studied your syllabus also that uh, the agri uh, supply chain which uh, starts from uh, in fact uh, the planning for uh, the uh, uh, production of uh, agricultural produce by the farmer and ends uh, at the consumer intervention. And as a farmer, uh, one is actually equally, you know, uh, required to understand the whole dynamics uh, for doing a very uh, uh, viable farming. And uh, the, in the whole process, uh, warehousing assumes the most uh, significant part because it provides both the forward as well as backward linkages. When I say backward linkages, the warehouses do help in uh, the storage of uh, various inputs like seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, machinery, and many other uh, required uh, materials uh, for agriculture. It also provides forward linkages. Forward linkages in terms of providing easy credit to the uh, producers in facilitating post harvest management of the produce, the scientific storage of the produce, and also it helps in orderly marketing of the produce to fetch a remunerative price 
including Goa. So, uh, in the whole process, processing is the most important uh, activity. Of course, there are a lot many uh, you know constraints in the whole uh, supply chain system, and uh, again here, the warehousing does come forward as a good support, or it does does help in mitigating those uh, constraints to some extent. The greatest constraint is the quality of produce. Because when the farmer produces uh, the goods and uh, he wants to trade it, so not much standardization is done at the farm level. And as it is, it is brought at the money level. So therefore, you will find that the money prices fluctuate drastically because a completely, you know, unstandardized produce is going to fetch a very poor price in the market. Whereas the same produce is uh, upgraded in its quality, it fetches a better price. So uh, even the packaging is very poor, market infrastructure, some places it is good, and but many places don't have all the facilities for uh, doing the value addition to the produce. The farmer also does not have adequate market information as to when to bring the produce in the Monday and when he is going to get a better price. The pricing system is also, uh, though uh, government has a lot of programs by which the farmers can get the um, price of agriculture produce, particularly the uh, total agmagnet.gov.in. But still, uh, the access of uh, farmers to these resources is uh, not as good because uh, either he is not fully aware of this or uh, he is not able to use various uh, IT tools to raise the price. And um, the whole process is further, you know, complicated by the presence of large number of middlemen who keep on meddling with the prices and their interest is that uh, they should take the produce from the farmers on the throwaway prices. But when they ultimately sell it to the others, they will sell it at a very high price. The farmer uh, or the producer does not also have an access to adequate warehousing facilities. There may be, uh, for data's sake, there is large capacity available in the country. But uh, the warehouses in proximity are very limited. And therefore, and he does not uh, have the resources to uh, carry or transport the small quantity of produce all the way from his farm gate to these uh, warehouses, which are located in cities or semi urban areas. Transport facilities are also not uh, very good in the rural areas, though. Uh, government has also launched the Gati Shakti program, which uh, you know uh, aims at helping uh, the producers and other uh, players in the agri logistics sector to uh, avail the uh, uh, required transport in a very seamless manner. So, uh, how does the warehousing come into play to help not only producers, various stakeholders involved in the supply chain? The, though the basic uh, objective of uh, warehousing is and uh, is to uh, provide a storage uh, for tradable goods. As the name warehouse indicate, it is uh, having composed of two words, where and house. Where signifies the tradability of the produce because in the market you see a lot of uh, goods being sold as uh, hardware, software, sanitary wear, kitchen wear. And uh, so this wear signifies the tradability of goods or tradable goods and house signifies a storage facility. So warehouse is uh, thematically a place where tradable goods are kept. But the basic function of the warehouse lies in providing a scientific storage of the produce that's helping in minimization of post harvest losses and studies. And because the warehouse has provided time and space utility, so the farmer, if he brings it goods in the warehouse, so he's able to, you know, extend the date of sale uh, of his produce to a date when uh, the market prices are favorable. So in a way, it helps in avoiding the distress sale. And ultimately, uh, warehousing greatly helps in you know, the price, price stabilization. So, lot of uh, liquidity or fluidity in the prices is highly managed by the warehouses. But 
apart from the storage uh, the greatest advantage of uh, warehouse is that it converts into the com the commodity into a negotiable warehouse receipt so this negotiable warehouse receipt becomes a bankable asset like a check or a draft or a currency note this uh, negotiable warehouse receipt can uh, be used as an instrument to uh, go for trading and uh, for availing credit against pledge of these commodities uh, under uh, uh, our underlying goods of the negotiable warehouse receipt and warehouses also provide many other services value added services which ultimately help in value addition of the produce brought by the farmers it is without any doubt that there is a big need for uh, providing public warehousing of agricultural produce because uh, pre-independence the situation of agri warehousing was very very pathetic only after independence uh, the uh, process of agri warehousing was uh, uh, thought of in a big way and it was only during uh, 1956 followed by 1962 when i you know uh, completely organized the uh, system of uh, public uh, warehouses across the country was thought of with the uh, implementation of uh, you know uh, with the introduction of uh, central warehousing corporation state warehousing corporations as well as warehouses run by the cooperative warehouses they uh, uh, provide uh, a host of uh, primary services which are linked to the warehouses but they can also provide many ancillary services Primary services include, you know, all that cleaning, grading, standardization, packaging, preservation, inventory management, safety and security of goods, insurance of stock, and uh, uh, facilitating place financing. But there are many other ancillary services which also a good warehouse does provide, and these facilities give uh, an extensive business options to the warehouse by providing handling and transport support. To the uh, holders of the negotiable warehouse receipt, helping in door to door delivery, even documentation of the goods kept in the warehouse, and we're also providing the support in the terms of clearing and forwarding to customers. Now, these warehouses can be categorized in a different manner, and this will be useful for you because when you are planning for the warehouse, you should know that what kind of warehouses can be run by you and uh, what role they have. See, large number of warehouses are running in the form of the private warehouse. When I say private warehouse, does not mean that a warehouse run by a private sector entity. But private warehouse is one where the warehouse operator is keeping his own goods. So in a way, it is a captive warehouse. Now, a private warehouse or captive warehouse does not have a much stake in the market because uh, uh, the owner himself is keeping his goods so a third party control is not there on the goods therefore it's quite risky particularly uh, in commodity financing and trading therefore uh, usually the financing institutions don't prefer to finance place finance in case of private warehousing then the other concept is a management warehouse where the godown is owned by an entity and a third party takes over the management of that godown either uh, by taking it on lease or rent or uh, with an arrangement uh, with the godown owner revenue sharing arrangement and uh, once the third party starts managing the godowns then the even uh, owner of the warehouse also become a client for the warehouse and in that case he can bring his, his goods uh, to the warehouse his warehouse managed by a third party so this kind of arrangement is called a, a management warehouse then the third category is a public warehouse where you know it is warehouse is run by uh, a third party and it keeps the goods belonging to large number of depositors who can be other than the uh, warehouse operator 
so here because the whole surveillance and maintenance of goods is uh, with the third party so the public warehouses are highly preferred by banks as well as trading platforms for the purpose of place financing or negotiability of warehouse receipts and uh, it is always profitable to go for a public warehouse now there are also different types of warehouses based on the ownership or effective control nearly we may say that uh, 50% around 50% of the warehouse in the country are even uh, slightly above that are the warehouses owned by the operators but then there is a large number of warehouses which are taken on lease or sub lease or on rent or on revenue sharing arrangement here the owner is somebody else but the warehouse operator takes this warehouses for uh, running uh, as a business and uh, as per the terms of the agreement executed for the purpose of any kind of uh, these arrangements the warehouse operator gets sole right on use of the warehouse without any intervention or interference of the godown owner when there is no intervention or intervention of the godown owner and the uh, lessee is uh, fully authorized to use the uh, godowns then it may be called as a true uh, uh, effective control so it is generally to be seen that what kind of arrangement you have and uh, it can be the warehouse can be operated in both the manners there are uh, different types of warehouses uh, which can be you know defined as per the infrastructure the most common warehouses are general or conventional warehouses uh, where you know uh, it's just a dry warehouse without any uh, specific infrastructure but simply at the shed having a lot of protection from the sides and the roof and the floor so that the stocks can be stored uh, particularly the non perishable stock uh, can be stored for longer time in uh, under ambient conditions without any uh, significant damage to the goods but there are other specialized category of uh, warehouses like uh, cold storage temperature control warehouses are controlled atmosphere storage systems silos tank storage container freight stations multi story warehouses automotive warehouses so variety of warehouses are available and today this is a time of automated warehouses of course this automated warehouses are generally uh, for uh, the handling of uh, sophisticated goods or high value goods and as far as the uh, agri warehousing is concerned generally conventional warehouses or cold storages or silos these are the common types of warehousing infrastructure which is largely being used when you are thinking of uh, going for a warehousing business so some challenges you may be faced so uh, and you should i don't uh, want to show this slide to you to discourage you but uh, once you are there in the field you should also know that what kind of challenges you are going to get and uh, then you have to try to you know handle those kind of challenges particularly with respect to the infrastructure and land availability uh, you will find challenges in the standardization of uh, the infrastructure of course for conventional godowns cold storages and uh, silos there are uh, standards available but uh, there is a lot of diversification going on in the field of warehousing and uh, then you have to uh, have challenges regarding the standardization cost of credit also if you want to get money from the bank or uh, without any support of any scheme or program based on your own corporate collaterals if you want to get a credit it is really very difficult market uh, warehousing market is india is not well organized because lot of unorganized players are there operating and uh, the wdra authority like wdra they are trying to make uh, the warehousing sector more organized power failures are a big challenge in particularly in the warehouses where a lot of power is to be used like uh, cold storages temperature control storages or uh, even uh, control atmosphere storages or even uh, you know uh, your silos they also uh, need a lot of power still uh, though a lot of uh, improvement has been Made on the roads, uh, but still uh, there is just some problem in the due to you know roads in the rural areas and uh, 
the farmers are to bring their produce from the farm gate to the warehouses located in cities or urban areas, semi-urban areas. So it takes a lot of time uh, in transit. Lot of uh, warehouses are not operating as per any standard operating procedure. Again, it makes a very highly risky uh, area and uh, leading to a lot of losses. Tax regime has also been simplified, but again, uh, it puts a lot of challenges. Uh, and uh, uh, adequate integration with the complete supply chain also is a challenge. Availability of trained manpower. Again, uh, uh, you, as a person, as a professional, having a uh, professional qualification with you in the field of agribusiness man management, you may be having some uh, better qualification. But uh, when you go for running a warehouse and you need the people at the shop floor level, you know, go down clerks, um, uh, quality control personnel, or uh, people to operate the uh, IT and communication systems in a warehouse, you will find challenges uh, in getting adequate number of skilled manpower. Though Agricultural Skill Council of India, or Logistics Skill Council, under the Ministry of Skill Development. They are trying to bring in a lot of uh, uh, frameworks for uh, skill development of various personnel operating warehouses. But of course, uh, we have to do a lot of work in this field. IT is becoming a uh, rule of uh, the game nowadays. And uh, unless you have adequate IT application in your operations, your success will be less. So again, it is a challenge and uh, and all the challenges are not such which are impossible. They are manageable. Only they require some sort of vision planning and you know having uh, self confidence and some understanding of the market, some professional uh, knowledge and uh, education. So certainly these challenges can be handled. Now they told you that negotiable warehouse receipts is the most critical part of the whole warehousing operation because moment the goods are deposited in a warehouse and warehouse is capable of issuing a negotiable warehouse receipt against the goods i think the goods kept in the warehouse get a lot of value and uh, though uh, way back in 1956 itself uh, when the act was uh, agricultural produce development and warehousing corporation act was brought in it had uh, provided that uh, in the country, uh, the warehouses uh, established under the Act shall be issuing negotiable warehouse receipts against deposit of goods, which can be placed with the bank, which can be traded or transferred and negotiated in a different manner. But this challenge was that legally these uh, warehouse receipts were not a negotiable document because they did not find a place in the Negotiable Instrument Act. So, uh, and the only reference was available in the Indian Contract Act, which dealt with an obligation of warehouse man as a bailey of goods, and the sale of goods act, which spoke about the warehouse keeper certificate as a document of title to the underlying goods. But apart from being, uh, you know, identified legally as a document of title to the underlying goods, negotiability was not fully legally controlled. As a result, though initially because the warehousing was in public sector, central and state warehousing corporations, and to large extent the cooperative sector, the banks had some comfort because the cooperatives were largely you know managed through the local cooperative banks, and uh, other uh, national and uh, scheduled banks had some degree of con comfort by dealing with the public sector warehouses because they were controlled and government controlled warehouses. But when uh, the economic liberalization in the late 90s, when a large number of private sector warehouses came in the country, then the fears of non recovery of loans, frauds, mismanagement, insolvency of depositors, inadequate legal remedies to deal with such a kind of uh, anomalies, and uh, putting a question on the negotiability of warehouse shifts came up. And then the need was felt that there has to be a full fledged law which provides a legal negotiability to the warehouse receipts and uh, helps in creating a well-organized regulated framework of warehousing in the entire country. This, uh, view in mind, the warehousing development regulation 
2007 were brought in by the government of India and uh, it was made effective from 25th October 2010. And also for uh, implementing the provisions of this act, the warehousing development and regulatory authority was set up on 26th October 2010. Under the act, various functions have been provided to the warehousing development and regulatory authority. The basic uh, idea is to, you know, with the help of authority and with the help of the uh, act at the back end, create a system of uh, regulated and organized warehousing in the country and uh, uh, regulate the negotiability of legal negotiability of the warehouse receipts. And for that purpose, the authority has been uh, uh, interested uh, to go for registering, renewing, suspending and cancelling the registration of the warehouses, such warehouses which are issuing negotiable warehouse receipts and various other uh, provisions, you know, which ultimately directly or indirectly help in uh, promoting the efficiency in conduct of warehousing business in the country. Section 3 of uh, the Act is very explicit uh, in uh, mentioning that uh, no person is authorized to carry on the business of warehousing and uh, issuing the negotiable warehouse receipts unless he has obtained a registration certificate from the authority after fulfilling the various norms. So if someone is issuing a negotiable warehouse receipt without uh, uh, getting itself registered with the WDRA, is uh, ignoring the law, and which is uh, uh, certainly uh, not uh, as per the law. And uh, uh, in the process, once a warehouse is registered with WDRA, then it comes under the regulatory framework and gets empowered to, you know, be able of using all the provisions of the Act for having a well-organized warehousing business. And uh, for registration, authority has described certain infrastructure standards as well as certain operational standards and some financial requirements. Infrastructure standards are uh, warehousing infrastructure requirements are largely aimed at providing storage worthy storage and uh, uh, and uh, scientific storage and uh, providing adequate uh, physical uh, security to the goods in the warehouse and uh, well uh, managed uh, warehouse operations uh, there is a need to have a standard operating procedure for the entity which ensures that the warehouse is operated at certain uh, norms and for the benefit of uh, all the warehousing sector in the country, the WDRA has developed a model uh, standard operating procedures and it is available on WDRA portal. Anyone, including you people, you can go to the WDRA portal and download a copy of the standard operating procedure and which will give you a very clear picture as to how a well organized warehouse should run without uh, any chances for, uh, you know, damage to the goods or loss to the goods and uh, any risk to the negotiable warehouse receipt. The, the authority also requires adequate insurance of the stock against, uh, you know, fire, flood, burglary. And of course, in case of cold storage, uh, damage to the stock due to power failure and uh, damage to the plant and machinery. The authority uh, also requires adequate networks of the warehouse operator as uh, per the capacity of the warehouse. So the networks uh, for the small capacity warehouse is quite moderate. It is as low as uh, 4 lakh rupees. So I'm very sure that any warehouse operator, uh, even a small warehouse will have the network of 4 lakh rupees. Uh, then uh, authority also requires a kind of security deposit to be provided by the uh, registered warehouse. And again, uh, not in the form of a cash, but some sort of uh, guarantee in the form of a bank guarantee or uh, FD. And again, it's quite reasonable, uh, not a very huge amount, uh, particularly for small uh, FD warehouses. It has been highly rationalized and it is very less, maybe about 50,000 to uh, 1 lakh or uh, more, but uh, it's quite uh, less. Of course, if you are going to run a warehouse, you have to com be compliant with the various local uh, laws like uh, 
uh, warehousing license under the state warehouse act or uh, various kind of other local requirements for uh, the municipal uh, corporations like shops and establishment act various kind of uh, registrations uh, with the fire department or income tax department and uh, many other uh, kind of uh, uh, compliances are required and when you are going to uh, start a warehouse you should be very clear in your course material also we have uh, provided a whole you know uh, compilation of uh, laws which are relevant for warehouse and i'm very sure that uh, when you plan for going to run a warehouse you will thoroughly read that those laws and try to keep yourself update about those laws because laws are also keeping changing and um, a lot of movements take place so always be updated with those laws I sake of you know every warehousing an issue of the uh, usual warehouse receipt for the such goods the authority has also notified about 134 agricultural commodities and about 26 horticultural commodities against which uh, the negotiable warehouse receipts can be issued by the warehouses registered with the authority. As far as registration process is concerned, it's very simple. From 2017, the entire registration process has been made online. So no physical application is required. And uh, from your place itself, you can submit your uh, application. It is in two parts. First part is the registering your entity. Suppose you open a warehousing warehouse company or uh, you are establishing a established a warehouse given some name to it so first the entity matlab you as a warehouse operator will be registered with the authority you will create your login id and password and provide the details uh, of yourself in terms of uh, your you know id and uh, address proof uh, the proof of having uh, uh, sop or uh, you know your net worth or insurance if you want to provide the insurance immediately or uh, if you want you can give the insurance at a later date then uh, once the you are approved by authority as a warehouse man then you can apply for registering the warehouses you can apply for any number of warehouses which you are operating and uh, application comes online to the authority and uh, it is scrutinized at the warehouse level and once the application is found in order, then the WDR conducts a physical inspection of the warehouse by its own staff or impaneled inspection agencies. And uh, if on inspection, the infrastructure of the warehouse is also found to be as per the WDRA standards, then you would be asked to furnish a, a security deposit uh, uh, for the registration of the warehouse. The security deposit is uh, again uh, for small capacity warehouses, it is only 50,000. For larger capacity warehouses, more than uh, 2,000 metric ton, it is uh, 1 lakh rupees in the form of a bank guarantee or uh, FD. And uh, once you are registered, then depending on the value of E and WRs, the security have been prescribed. Uh, and once the uh, fixed security deposit of uh, 50,000 and one lakh, depending on the capacity of the warehouse run by you, is uh, furnished, the registration certificate is issued by the authority. Generally, the whole process uh, is completed within 45 days. Uh, but uh, if the application is in order, infrastructure is uh, as per WDRA requirements, then uh, it is uh, done much earlier also. And uh, the whole scrutiny uh, is done to see that the warehouse meets all the requirements. And uh, once you are registered with the authority, then you get a lot of advantages. One, you are authorized to issue a negotiable warehouse receipt or an electronic negotiable warehouse receipt, which is going to be you know, the trade of the future. Then the WDRA at its own cost will provide you full five days residential training on professional agri warehouse management. Not only that, but all new uh, developments in the authority will be always available with you. You know that what are the new developments taking place. And uh, it will give you a brand value. Also, uh, once you issue the electronic negotiable warehouse receipt, then uh, you will require to uh, properly grade the goods. So uh, standardization will be uh, you know, encouraged in the warehousing operations and you will be required to do the movement of the goods correctly or report a correct uh, market price of the goods. So 
while doing this, your processes will be getting standardized and you will get a brand value in the market because then everybody knows that it is WDRA registered warehouse and it has got all the credibility and reputation in the market. Now, uh, from 26 September 2017, the authority also moved from paper based receipts to digitalized negotiable warehouse receipts, that is, electronic negotiable warehouse receipt. Why it was done? Because the electronic negotiable warehouse receipt provided faster movement of information, which ultimately leads to you know, automatic creation of an audit trail by breaking barriers and uh, reaching every corner of the country through the electronic framework and because electronic document has got a lot of checks and balances and without following all the process it cannot be issued unlike paper based receipts and ultimately uh, it promotes proper grading inspection and payment and ultimately the credibility and security of the warehouses there are many inbuilt uh, you know advantages with electronic negotiable processes a lot of chance possibility of loss mutilation tempering fudging etc are minimized nobody can issue uh, electronic negotiable warehouse receipts because without receiving goods or receiving duplicate warehouse receipt for the same goods because um, there are various checks and balances put in the system and unless uh, it is verified at the first level uh, it will not go to the second level so a single not a single person is you know allowed to just issue a receipt whatever he wants so the chances of any manipulation or fraud are highly minimized and the whole industry knows about the process so once you are on the enwr you are a credible entity and uh, already uh, told you uh, it's the most credible and secure document its format is uniform because it's a digitized format. Nobody can say that my format is this, other may not say it's my format. It's a uniform format for everybody across the platform. And uh, with being an electronic, the depositor or farmer bringing its produce in the market will have access to a nationwide buyers, large number of buyers with a better bargaining power. The electronic warehouse receipt can be split into you know different quantities. Paper, it's not possible. Electronically, it can always be divided into different quantities uh, and you can use it for different purposes. Multiple transfers are possible. An efficient clearing, settlement, and delivery system is uh, available with a lot of transparency in the trading of agricultural produce. And whatever information is there in the ENWR or related information on the back end. It can be easily shared with the multiple stakeholders like bankers, commodity exchanges, government, etc. So uh, the whole uh, commodity trading system is becoming very transparent and highly reliable to all the stakeholders. And with all these uh, systems in place, the chances of litigations are greatly reduced because in warehousing, if you are handling commodities which are really highly, you know, fragile product. If not properly can handled, then heavy use losses may take place, downgradation may take place, substandardization may take place, and ultimately, which may lead to litigations. But once you go with the ENWRs, chances are highly minimized. There are two repositories like repository in the sun market, which have been you know given certificate of registration by WDRA. One is CDSL, Community Repository Limited, CCRL. Which, uh, which is a subsidiary of uh, CDSL, uh, that is the uh, uh, depository facility. Now, that is National E Repository Limited or NERL, which is a subsidiary of you know, NCDX. You all know that NCDX is a major commodity trading platform of the country. Who are the users of this uh, platform? One is the field agents of the repository, which are also called as repository participants or RPs. They are available in, in the, the whole country, in every district. So anyone uh, wants to use ENWRs can very well approach RP and get registered with him. Then uh, warehousemen, warehouse operators uh, can uh, 
uh, use the repository platform for issue of ENWRs. Depositors and buyer can uh, go to this platform because they want to go to for ENWR, and they can have all the transactions on ENWRs performed through the repository platform. Various financial institutions, banks, and non-banking financial institutions, they uh, also can use commodity derivative exchanges who are fully integrated with the ENWR system. They can use and the repository is also connected with a number of e auction platforms so if any one of the stakeholder wants to e auction the goods belonging to him owned by him he can very well use the repository support for uh, going for e auction so what are the various uh, stages in the life cycle of enwr one is the creation and issuance of enwr and deposit of goods if uh, the grading is not done immediately so the system issues a electronic non-negotiable balance sheet which cannot be negotiated you cannot get pledge finance you cannot trade it but once the grading of the goods is completed then it gets converted into a enwr automatically the system is quite like that so um, delivery of uh, underlying goods against enwrs so goods under enwrs or even enwrs can be delivered if the goods uh, are covered under ENWR, they can only be delivered. No other negotiability is possible. So, uh, pledge management uh, is also uh, facilitated by uh, the e repositories because they are integrated bank with banking institutions and uh, their repositories and banks are going to bring out a common platform so that uh, by using the banking platform, the pledge financing should be fully automated. E auction is also facilitated through the repositories. Now, having a background of you know full uh, scenario of warehousing uh, under which you can go for warehousing as a business. So we'll discuss that how a person who is uh, planning to go for a rural warehousing business uh, can uh, go for it. If you look at the major players in agri warehousing, you'll find. A large number of public sector organizations like Central Warehousing Corporation, State Warehousing Corporations, and APMCs, they are into uh, public sector warehousing. There are a lot many private uh, warehouse operators. There are large WSPs, they call it warehouse service providers. Many of you may be working in the WSPs, like uh, you know NCML, Star Agri Warehousing, System Logistics, Small All Commodities Management Limited. National Bulk Handling Corporation, Naujyoti Commodities. Likewise, uh, there are large WSPs, Origo Commodities, which have, you know, uh, LTC Commercial Corporation, which have uh, themselves having uh, three to 400 uh, warehouses operated in the country. And there are individual warehouse operators, which are, have uh, single warehouses operated by them uh, scattered across the country. There are small cooperatives whose capacity is 100 empty metric ton or so. There are farmer producer organizations who are also into warehousing uh, because uh, they represent the farmers, so they run warehousing for the farmer members. Then there are small rural entrepreneurs, self help groups, etc., also which are into warehousing. And many of them are doing a very good warehousing business. The WDRA has given some special considerations to the warehouses operated by cooperatives and FPOs. And but our endeavor is that we give a lot of support to the small farm rural warehouses. So our fee, our network requirement, our security de deposit requirements have highly been subsidized, reduced for the small farm warehouses. Now, why uh, uh, the need also to be? Because government also is uh, quite keen that uh, the warehousing should be established in the rural areas with the help of uh, these entrepreneurs. Because we all know that uh, today, majority of warehouses are there available in the cities or uh, urban, semi-urban areas, which are quite far from the farm gate. And the farmer, you know, is not interested in, uh, and he does not have much uh, resources also to transport his goods all the way from his farm 
to these uh, big warehouses. So uh, if more and more people go and take up uh, rural warehousing, so it will help in creation of warehousing infrastructure or gainful utilization of otherwise unused go down Let me tell you that even there are large number of warehouses available in the rural areas, which are, you know, <clears throat> not operational, defunct, because uh, there is no one to professionally run those warehouses. There is not uh, much people available to run. So even uh, such facilities are also lying unused. So if and the entrepreneurs go into rural warehousing, but if possibly more infrastructure will be created, or the infrastructure already available and lying in uh, non-operational or defunct condition can be gainfully utilized. So in a way, it will be creating uh, generating a self-employment opportunity for agri professionals. And once such warehouses are registered with WDRA, so it will help these warehouses to you know improve to the uh, standards of. Uh, regulation and standards of warehousing operations and uh, are notified uh, accredited as a scientific warehouse which are eligible to issue <coughs> electronic negotiable warehouse receipt which has multiple benefits i've already explained to you so ultimately it will save farmers from either uh, taking their uh, produce to markets frequently and ending up in you know spending a lot of money uh, in transportation and then uh, out of frustration, selling it on a distressed sale. It will also help in grading and standardization of farmers produce and warehouse level. And, uh, and uh, leading to good price uh, to the farmers produce. And uh, even uh, the rural uh, warehouse operator, the entrepreneur can also help the farmers in getting easy place loan from the banks, R and because is able to you know uh, value it to the product product and ultimately the uh, once it is registered by wdra it is capable of issuing enwrs so the banks and nbfcs will find it uh, you know more reliable to place finance without much hassle and, and then ultimately it will also help in profitable marketing of farmers produce because once the goods are properly graded it becomes of uh, one kind all the produce kept in the warehouse, if they are improved to grade one, uh, first grade, grade A. So uh, uh, the standardized products this way will fetch a better uh, market and market price uh, uh, in the market, and which ultimately will benefit the uh, depositor or the farmer as well as uh, the rural uh, warehouse entrepreneur. Now, uh, you can think as to how, uh, what will be your sources, uh, you know, for uh, developing or establishing a warehousing infrastructure in the rural area. So there are three options available to you. Either you go with your own resources, if you've got a piece of land, uh, or uh, you can avail support from the government schemes. By, uh, or you can also go by leasing or hiring of unutilized rural good house infrastructure available in different parts of the country for your resources uh, uh, suppose you want to establish a thousand empty of warehouse so approximately 2100 square meter uh, area will be required by you which will comprise of about uh, 557 square meter required for uh, making the go down and plus about 1500 square meter area as a operational area of course as the capacity will increase, the operational area will not increase in that proportion. And it is uh, observed that two acre of land is uh, usually sufficient for 5,000 metric ton of warehouse. Because once the capacity increases, maybe your operational area will not be increasing in that. Uh, but for lesser capacity, possibly the operational area will be much more. Uh, but uh, this is required for a good warehouse because once you open a warehouse, you will have its boundary and then the transport vehicles, uh, tempos, trucks will come in the warehouse and they will be docked on the go down doors for loading and unloading operations. So uh, you have, should have a, a, a reasonable space for, you know, uh, parking and maneuverability of the vehicles in the warehouse. 
cost of construction is uh, approximately 5000 rupees per mt as per the industry estimates uh, and um, again you know it will depend uh, where you are constructing the prices may slightly go down or may slightly increase but it is approximation that uh, you are uh, targeting for uh, this much investment so it will help you in uh, creating a uh, 5000 rupees per metric ton this is a uh, exclusive of the light and also there is a vis standard available for uh, agricultural godowns or conventional godowns warehouses is 16144 2014 if you fetch a copy of this act go through this so it will give you enough understanding as to how a scientific warehouse can be constructed and uh, if you are uh, following this uh, standard so all the infrastructure requirement of WDRA with respect to the godowns will be automatically complied by you. Suppose you don't have uh, your own resources to that extent, so you can avail uh, support from various government schemes also. There are uh, now the government is putting a lot of stress on uh, uh, developing rural infrastructure in the country and uh, greater reforms are also taking place uh, for infrastructure development and uh, a number of schemes are there and uh, you can certainly try to get details of uh, those schemes and what kind of support you can avail from them and uh, that will also help you in establishing uh, rural uh, warehouses then uh, you can also uh, look for uh, the unutilized or uh, closed uh, warehouse uh, uh, in the area where you are targeting to run a warehouse and take that facility on these or higher by different arrangements we have discussed in the beginning of this presentation on uh, a release level lease or rent and start running the warehouse possibly the third approach will be uh, better cost effective because your investment will be greatly reduced and once you are able uh, to run the uh, warehouse in a profitable manner then possibly uh, you can uh, think of uh, you know further expanding it uh, after getting support from various sources there will be a challenge in losing or uh, hiring unutilized go down, go down, but uh, there may be some challenges with respect to their infrastructure. But if you can clearly understand that what are the infrastructure requirements of the WDRA, then you can uh, very well try to improve that infrastructure uh, to the required standards by not much investment. And uh, then uh, you can get it registered with WDRA. Once you get registered with WDRA, then we're getting all kind of supports um, in uh, improving your operations and uh, uh, getting standardized with respect to your um, uh, negotiable processes and uh, other processes and uh, getting better uh, credibility and support in the market. Now, now there are a good number of schemes available presently uh, uh, by the government. One is the Rastri Kishi Vikas Yojana where uh, many states, you know, they make their plans and uh, for uh, development of infrastructure and they get central funding. And uh, through the state RKVY also, you can uh, get support for uh, construction of rural warehouses. The Mission on Integrated Development of Horticulture, or MIDH, there is a provision of uh, creating a cold chain infrastructure, cold storages, control atmosphere storages, or uh, even temperature control storages. And you can get uh, support from uh, this MIDH. The government also has brought down brought out the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund, which is uh, being implemented by uh, the help of NEVAD and a uh, good number of banks. So here, this again an uh, interest submission uh, fund, and you can avail this facility. Government has put almost one lakh crore rupees on this, and major uh, uh, investment is towards uh, warehousing infrastructure. So you can avail this facility. Recently, a scheme on blended capital raised under co-investment model uh, being implemented by NEVAD has also been brought out by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, and which is jointly being implemented by Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and NEVAD. There is also uh, a scheme on uh, integrated uh, cold chain and value addition infrastructure under Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sampada Yojana and which is being implemented by the Ministry of Food Processing Industries. And there is also a central sector integrated scheme for agricultural cooperation 
and the Ministry of Cooperatives. Under that also, uh, there is support available for establishment of uh, go-downs as well as uh, cold storages. Then under Ministry of uh, Small and Medium Enterprises also, there are a good number of schemes which uh, provide support for uh, construction of uh, smaller businesses and uh, funding support is provided through MSME. So if you are planning to run uh, establish a very small captive warehouse, possibly you can uh, look for some support from the MSME schemes also. As far as uh, availing uh, uh, are taking uh, non-functional warehouses uh, in rural areas, uh, as per the NABAR data, close to around 2,495 warehouses are available uh, in the country in different states. Uh, you can see the number. And uh, these can also be, you know, taken work by the rural entrepreneurs uh, in the area he wants to establish by some market survey and uh, some sort of uh, research and study and take such uh, non-operative or non-functional go-downs and get uh, uh, some, uh, try to improve their infrastructure. Then uh, once you are going to run a warehousing business, you can also, you will also be required to do some costing of the warehouse because uh, then you have to see that uh, what will be your return on the investment. And uh, certainly you can do some exercise wherein uh, you can divide the operating cost of the warehouse into two parts, fixed cost and establishment cost. Now, the fixed cost, they include establishment. Establishment includes the salary, uh, even uh, sometimes you may put some salary for you also. And uh, salary to be given to the manpower, how much manpower do you require? Now again, uh, though WDRA has provided some uh, norms for manpower in its SOP, but you can decide as to how much manpower. If you are running a very small warehouse, may not require a huge manpower. I think a uh, group of one or two people will also be able to carry on the work. And accordingly, you can build in the cost of uh, their salary and other expenses. You can also put the fee, uh, various kind of fees like uh, taking uh, license fee, warehouse license fee, or a WDRA registration cost, etc. They can build in in your fixed cost. The lease, if you are taking a warehouse on lease rent, your lease rent can also be put. And uh, if uh, you are uh, using a constructed warehouse, so you will uh, you can take the depreciation on the equipment and other infrastructure. So it's a go down constructed by you, so you can take the depreciation of the go down also. Then. There are various variable costs like uh, preservation cost, which involves, includes assaying expenses, disinfestation expenses, and handling expenses. Here uh, you will have to take uh, the uh, you know uh, the cost of various because equipments you have already taken uh, in the first fixed cost. Here you can take the operational cost. Suppose you have to get the assaying done from outside, so whatever charges you are paying, that will be included. If you are putting somebody, you're taking somebody's services for a saying, whatever charge you pay to him, that will be included. If you are undertaking disinfestation, so the cost of various types of chemicals like for a spraying, cost of delta methane, cost of melathion has to be uh, included. Then uh, what uh, fumigants you are using, phosphine, aluminum phosphide, for rate control, whatever chemicals you are using. So all those uh, values will be taken. And uh, you will see uh, that uh, what is the expenditure incurred during the storage period for sake of your, uh, you know, costing. You can initially take the annual cost because they are like uh, fumigation may not be required to be done every month. Uh, it will be once in quarter. So accordingly, you can uh, work out the cost handling expenses. Sometimes the stock has to be done some internally handled loading and loading of the stock from the stacks. So that cost also has to be built in. And uh, the insurance cost, because you have to take insurance cost of damage materials, because uh, you have to use different types of damage materials for uh, storage of goods. This damage also has got limited life. Usually uh, the most simple damage does not last for one year, but uh, Nowadays, good quality of damage are available, which will be lasting for uh, a longer period. 
if you've got such a dunnage which uh, lasts for a longer period then possibly you can put under uh, fifth cost also so you can decide uh, with the kind of infrastructure you're using then miscellaneous costs may also be uh, put uh, which will include your IT and communication costs, entertainment costs like uh, you're providing some water, some retrenchment to your laborers, workers, local conveyors. You'll be requiring to do some publicity also. So all these costs can be built in the publicity uh, miscellaneous cost. And then you can put some overheads also, some unforeseen costs, some uh, cost which will be uh, for overall supervision, surveillance, so maybe you can put some seven to eight percent of the cost on overheads. And once you have uh, arrived at annual cost, taking both fixed and variable cost, then you can uh, convert into uh, monthly cost. And uh, then uh, you can also uh, see some uh, expected profit margin on the total cost, keeping in view your return on your investment and also your uh, margin for further development of business. And uh, so once you are able to bring out the monthly uh, charges for the warehouse, which will be giving you an economic uh, return, then you can break into a unit charger for package. Because uh, once you know the dimensions of the warehouse, Generally, uh, WDRA is a thumb rule. We say that uh, six square feet is equivalent to one metric ton. So either we divide the square feet area by six, so it gives a, a metric ton uh, a capacity. And if your uh, packaging is 50 kg or 100 kg, so accordingly you can uh, break the cost charges uh, into per package and uh, then you can fix. Generally, uh, in the industry, the uh, warehousing charges uh, are uh, there for uh, ranging from six rupees to about uh, twelve to thirteen rupees, depending on the location of the warehouse and uh, kind of a competition in the warehousing business. And uh, accordingly, you can also looking into you know doing some sort of uh, surveillance in the market and seeing what other uh, players are charging. You can fix your uh, storage charges also uh, accord accordingly. Of course, uh, I have given you some uh, likely you know, uh, fixed and up variable costs, but if you are going to provide some other value added uh, services like uh, you know cleaning, 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 packaging, processing, or many other support services depending on your business uh, requirement coming from that area. Accordingly, you can add the resources under fixed cost and uh, operational uh, resources under the uh, variable cost so that you come to a realistic costing of the warehouse. Maybe uh, sometimes if you are uh, specific to this, so we can have some detailed session on this also going down below to uh, actual uh, approximate costs making a project. Now, what do you mean you should do? First, you create warehousing infrastructure by whatever means you decide. Get the go, get the go down registered with WDRA after fulfilling the various requirements. If you leased or rented devices, get it uh, further uh, upgraded or improved. Once you get registered with WDRA, you will be getting a free training on the warehouse management by WDRA. You would have downloaded a copy of the model standard operating procedure which you will be using for um, uh, organizing the, your warehousing operations as per that. And uh, you will also become eligible to issue electronic negotiable warehouse receipts, again, produce deposited after onboarding with one of the repositories, CCRL or NERL. You can also acquire cleaning, grading, bagging facilities at the warehouse as an ancillary service with some minimal charges. You can either charge uh, additionally for these or you can work out that if uh, these services are taken in isolation this will be my charge but if someone wants everything to be encapsulated in the storage charge so that also you can provide uh, creating some business uh, options so that people feel uh, privileged if they go for that 
everybody wants the farmer will like uh, all inclusive charges so that he can bring the raw produce in the warehouse and is vessel free afterwards because his goods will be clean graded put in bags good bags and uh, uh, will be a better tradable produce and but you'll have to do some marketing conducting the local farmers explaining the importance of your approach and how it is going to help them so that they do get encouraged to come to your warehouse if you can also help in working out some scheme for transporting the goods from farm gate to the warehouse that will also be greater you know motivation to the farmers to do to uh, use your warehouse premises once you start carrying out cleaning grading and standardization and packing up the farmers produce before putting the warehouse this will greatly help you also in having an organized warehouse because then your uh, warehouse will also be well maintained you issue if if you issue the enwr to such of the stock to the farmer uh, and uh, have it, uh, a contact or tie up with the local banks or nbhcs bring them uh, ask them to visit your warehouse and see what kind of uh, activity you are carrying out so they will be you know uh, be able to grant place loan and the earliest possible time as a reasonable rate of interest again the year because the banks also do carry out certain establishment and uh, collateral assessment but if uh, you are able to convince them that uh, providing you, your services are uh, more than any kind of uh, other surveillance by the banks so, uh, if their expenses uh, to that extent are reduced so they will like to provide a more competitive uh, rate of interest against the ELWR. And once the place loan is provided to the farmer, I think uh, his major work has been done and he will be quite motivated. I have seen many places, even if the farmer gets a place loan, even though on a higher rate of interest, but in a very shortest time, he prefers the warehouse to use. And of course, you are a professional, you are trained in warehousing management, so you can demonstrate exemplary preservation of the quality and quantity of produce stored. And this will itself give a lot of uh, good reputation to various stakeholders. If further moving ahead, you can act as an aggregator for the local farmers produce by way of some arrangement with them. You can have some agreement with them for uh, bulk uh, uh, marketing of the produce. And uh, here also, either you can put your own service charges or you can build in that efforts also, you know, storage charges. It will depend on the local, uh, you know, business complete competition and uh, affordability of the farmer. So as I told you earlier also that you can charge separately for the ancillary services or the warehousing charges may be built in such a way to improve all such incidentals depending on the accessibility of the local consumers. So uh, it was just a broad view that uh, uh, you can uh, going further deep in various aspects of this, you can prepare yourself uh, with all the uh, basic resources and further uh, get additional information uh, depending on what we discussed so that you are able to zero down your uh, whole project for establishing an agri warehousing by you so thank you very much uh, for having a very patient uh, you know listening to my uh, presentation